Every handshake can lead to something different. And whether it's assembling parts or starting startups, each deserves a banking partnership that's one of a kind. At CIBC, we tailor our services to you. We deliver on your business goals with an experienced commercial banking team you know and the resources of a bank with 150 years of putting clients first. A handshake with us leads to a banking partnership that's made for you. CIBC Commercial Banking. CIBC Bank USA member FDIC. Stand on your square, we on the curve, we about to earn it up. Tune in and turn it up to hear what we talking about, whether it's only or a new one. Call in with your group, one from head to our collective, a colorful perspective. The brothers, the brothers, word to the brothers, the, the queens and the kings, we gon' get into some things. Yeah, we been going deeper, waking up the super. Who be been the keeper? Yeah, your boy done found a keeper. Who we talking to? Like It is what it is. Peace, peace. Welcome back, family. This is Brother Kev. And this is Rigel in the building. Peace and blessings, family. This is Mufasa Rod joining you. And we are Collective Minds. Well, we say we all don't have to think alike, but we all got to think. And uh, welcome back. We have another uh, powerful episode here for you. Uh, We have a special guest in the building. I know you guys have seen the flyers. But before we get started, y'all, do we have any announcements? And uh, how was your week, Roger? Uh, My week was great. I'm just looking forward to this great show with our special guest. Who's on with us? And uh, but I don't have any announcements. I'm just looking forward to a good show. All right, my brother Mufasa. Uh, how was your week, my brother? And uh, do you have any announcements for us? Hey, you know I had a good week uh, also, and likewise, you know not no major announcements today. I'm just looking forward to building with Miss Elliot and uh, having a good conversation, good dialogue. That's right. That's right. And. Uh, I do have a real quick announcement, y'all. It's been on my mind this week. Just want to give a shout-out to all the mothers, and especially my mother. See, I don't want to wait till Mother's Day to, to acknowledge the mothers, but I just want to acknowledge my mother for all the things she has done, especially when I was a kid. When she used to wake oh. up in the morning and drop me off at school. <laughs> she used to do all type of things for me when she was tired, getting off work. I just want to say thank you, Mom, for all the sacrifices and all the things you've done. And now that I have kids myself, I really, really understand the love and sacrifice, you know, that parents and mothers make. So I just want to shout out to all the mothers, even you, Rigel. Shout out to you because you're doing a magnificent job with your kids. And, uh, you know, just real quick, just shout out to all the mothers out there. Just know that you are appreciate it, and we love you for, you know, raising up humanity and and keeping it 100 with us and and just holding us down. So I just wanted to put that out there. I don't want to wait to May to, you know, (laughs) just say Happy Mother's Day and to all the mothers, we love you. So I just wanted to put that out there. And uh, we know... Yes, sir. Go ahead. Brother, I did forget something. So hopefully we can touch on this next week or later. Everybody, do your research on H.R. Bill 5682, the First Step Act. We want to talk about this Prison Reform Act and how it's going to affect the community moving forward. That's right. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Take a look at that, family. Please uh, do your research on that. And uh, without further ado, we have a special guest in the building. This woman is an educator, has been putting in work for a long time, 
And uh, I first came to hear uh, her name when uh, she does an experiment called the brown-eyed, blue-eyed experiment, for those who don't know, where she separates people based on their eye color and discriminates uh, against them to show them the effects of racism. And like I say, she's been doing this work for a long time. Please welcome our special guest, Miss Jane Elliott. Are you with us, Miss Elliott? Yes, I am. All right, you, you but, sound kind of low. Wait, I have uh, to correct you on something. If I'm a teacher, yes, so I have to correct you on something. Yes, I do ma'am. not experiment with people without their permission or their approval. What okay. I do is create yeah. a microcosm of society in a classroom or a boardroom or wherever I'm working, and I do unto others as others in this country do unto others. And if what All I right. do when I create a microcosm of society is an experiment, mm-hmm. then what we have been doing with blacks and browns and yellow people in this country for the last 500 years is an experiment. Mm-hmm. It ought to be stopped because it's illegal to experiment with someone without their permission or their approval. Now, the word right. experiment yes, is indeed. used to describe what I The word the, the experiment is used to describe what I do in order to discredit the exercise. It okay. isn't an experiment. Yes, indeed. When I do okay. this, I'm yes, not indeed. trying to I'm learn something. I'm not trying to learn something from my students or the participants. I'm trying to mm-hmm. teach them something. There okay? you go. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. I got it. Yes, ma'am. I understand. And uh, before we get started, um, I guess if there's anybody that's been living under a rock and doesn't know your name or they're not familiar with you, is there anything you want to share about yourself and about the work that you do before we get started? Yeah, I started this 50 years ago, thinking that if I could educate, I'm not a teacher, I'm an educator, and the word educator comes from the root, which means lead, the prefix E, which means out, the suffix A-T-E, which means the act of, and the suffix O-R, which means one who does. An educator is one who is engaged in the act of leading people out of ignorance. That's what I wanted to do with this exercise. I didn't do it for fame. I didn't do it for fortune. I didn't do it to be loved. If I wanted to be loved, this exercise was the last way to get that done. I now know how it feel, how, how typhoid Mary must have felt because I can walk down the street in my hometown and have nobody speak to me because I am what they call a traitor to my race. And you see, Uh-oh. I think there's only one Uh-oh. race, the human race. That's all there is. Mm-hmm. So I'm not a traitor to the human race. So I don't take it, I don't take it personally anymore. I did when they were beating on my children. But my children are grown, and I lost one four months ago. And what's your next question? All right. Well, I want to, uh, first of all, just thank you for sharing a bit of your evening with us. Um, it is a real pleasure. And uh, at Collective Minds, we do like to have open, honest dialogue about race. And um, so I just want to thank you again for coming on the show and, and sharing some of your time with us, and we look forward to this conversation. Okay, let's go. All right. Yeah, let's, let's go. Now, before we get started, um, our, this is Brother Kev, and I want to ask two quick questions, and then I'll, uh, I'll uh, let my co-host ask a question as well. Now, the first question is a topic that we had on the show here recently, but I want to get your response. And the question that we asked to our listening audience is, is the system of white supremacy – Dying, dead, or alive, in your opinion, um, Dr. Jane Elliott? It's in its death throes right now because white people know that within 30 years, white people will be a numerical minority in the United States of America. And that's exactly why this fool in the White House is so determined to build a wall on the southern border because he wants to keep, he says, America for Americans. Well, what he doesn't realize is, because he says that those brown-skinned people reproduce too rapidly, but what he doesn't realize is that everybody who lives from the the northernmost point of Canada to the southernmost point of South America is an American. He just wants to keep out people of other colors. He (laughs) He is totally unaware that if they did, if they do a DNA on that fool, they'd find 
that there is a portion of his, his DNA came from a country in Africa. And what's he going to do when he finds that out? The white race, there is no white race. There are only shades of brown and black. There is no white race. That's a, that's a term that was made up during the Spanish Inquisition. We've got to give it up. There are no people who are white. So let's right. get over that first. There's only one race, and, and we're all members of it. And we all came from the same black women in sub-Saharan Africa between 300,000 and 500,000 years ago. Now, you can't get rid of that. That's the, that is the probably the most important part of my, of, 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 of what I am a descendant from. And I'm very proud of that fact. And I want everybody to be proud of the fact that we're all 30th to 50th cousins, every person on this earth. It's time to get uh, rid of it. The white race, the white, the idea of white superiority was made up. You know that white people right. are not superior because of the color of their skin. They Correct. do better in school because white teachers expect them to do better and will see to it that they do do better. And if they don't do better, they will falsify the records in order to see to it that they pass on to the next grade level. I've been a part of that system. I know what happens in schools. And I know what happens to little children in schools, particularly brown and black children. If, you're, if your listeners haven't read Nathan Rutstein's book, uh, the the, psycho, the races, racial conditioning of our children. They need to get it oh. and read it because it will t- so yeah, it, it will tell you. And the, yeah. the subtitle to that is "Ending Psychological Genocide in the Schools." The man knew okay. what he was what, talking what's that about. Author? Can you give me that author? The author one more is time. Nathan Rutstein. R U T S T E I N. Everybody has to read that book. The racial right. conditioning in our schools of our children, the racial, the racial conditioning of our children. The statements that he makes in that book are absolutely mind-blowing, and they're right. He's telling the truth. So, of course, we can't listen to him because he's telling the truth. We're very careful about who we listen to in this country. We don't want to listen to people who tell us the truth about what we have done and about what we're, what we're doing. If you think what we are doing, it has. I, I asked the people on the the uh, Jane Pinkett show last week. How long do you think this business of racism has been going on? They said, well, forever. No, it hasn't. It's been around for about 500 years. It came up during the Spanish Inquisition because they found out they couldn't tell who who the Jews were and who the other folks were. So they didn't, they realized that they were killing some people who were Jews. So they decided they would have to find a new way to decide who to kill and to capture. And they set on skin color. Now it is that recent. We created That is correct now. We created racism. Anything you create, you can destroy. We are um, in the act now, and we're doing well at destroying racism until this fool got elected. And now we're making backward steps very, very rapidly. Yep. And uh, just for the listeners, um, according to uh, Dr. Jacqueline Batalora, she wrote a book called The Birth of a White Nation, The Invention of White People and Its Relevance. And according to her, I believe she said the white race in America was invented around 1681. Um, well, so that's there is just, no you white know, race. For the there is right. no Correct. white race. Correct. There is no white Correct. race. You have Correct. to realize that that is the only reason whites began to rule the situation is because we came here and were willing to kill people to take this land. And we were, and we still are. We'll do it now if we have right. to. Indeed, indeed. Mm-hmm. Now, this, I, I do have one more question, uh, my brother Mufasa, and then I'll let you uh, let you take over and ask your question. Um, now, this is a two-part question, and again, we like to deal with truth here on Collective Minds. Uh, so I want to ask, in a system of white supremacy, do you think that it's, or in the system of racism that we live in currently, do you think it's logical for black people to assume that white people are racist, and are you racist yourself? Well, of course I'm a racist. I'm not stupid. If you have gotten through high school in the United States of America and you aren't a racist, you need to go back and take the course over. Because mm. that is what we are taught in the